What's up, you guys? Today I have here the throat god. Some of you may know him as the throat god, Edward Zipper Hands. Um, what's your other handle? Your, um, uh, people also call me Nick. Nick, yeah, that's. that's <laughs> and then what's the other? What's your uh, your last handle? Your uh, something? Why you? Yuri Main. That's the brand. What is that? The brand name. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Edward Zipper Hands is just like a. What's it called? From yeah. From the the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyways, yeah, this is my special guest today. Thank you, Nick, for coming. Thank you for having me, Eli. You are the first guest, the first official designer guest. Woo! <laughs> and yeah, man, um, let's talk about how we first met. Oh, man, yeah, that's a story, it way, bro. Way, 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 way back. I feel like people should know how we met and then like how small this world is yeah. of the fashion yeah. industry. How long ago did we meet? Uh, not that long. I think maybe it's been a total of eight months. Eight months. Yeah, yeah. I'd say eight, eight months, months to half a year. Days. Yeah, yeah. Twelve days for 12 sure. Twelve days for sure. <laughs> um, I actually knew of you for like a while, to be honest. A while. So yeah, when I first started doing like repairs and stuff, right? I remember you were on TikTok and then you were talking about like uh, production. Oh yeah, yeah. And you were also show. You also showed off like um, tools that you used. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I actually got one of the tools. It was the the drill hole. Thing. Oh yeah, the you know, punch, the, the puncher, the, punch. the puncher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that was clutch. So I would see oh, your that's videos. Yeah, that I, that's how I got introduced to you. I saw your videos now and then, and then I saw that you had like a um, a factory. Yeah. And then I started doing okay in my videos and stuff. And then I I've noticed that you would comment, and um, you'd be like, "Yo, if you ever need your patterns graded, blah blah." blah. You're in there, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "What the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> You're like, "Yo, I'm fucking good." <laughs> I was like, he's just fucking trying to steal my clients and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I first met you, I was like, okay, like this is like this, fuck this guy. This, this this guy's my competition. Like right away, like, <laughs> I was like, fuck this dude. And um, and then I started working at a factory, and then I was doing like their runs and stuff. Yeah. And then I I like physically saw this is the first time that I ever saw you in person. I saw you at Dara Threads, yeah. right? <laughs> and you were wearing like the turnkey pattern yeah. shirt, and that's how I knew that it was you. I was like, oh shit, like. He's he's really here. He's really about he's like this. In the flesh. He, yeah, in the flesh, bro. Like, you know what you're doing. You're at Dara Threads and stuff. And then I think after that, that's when I started following you. And then I realized that you were a really, really fucking cool dude. You know? Thanks, dude. And then um and then I quit that factory job and then I just started working with you. Yeah. And that's that's my side of so that that's how I remember we met. Yeah. I remember then you came by the, the studio or something like that. But you know what's funny is that I never really, I wasn't trying to, I, I didn't even understand what you were doing, right? I thought you just made custom clothes. Yeah. And like, I, 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 it, my intention was never even to steal your clothes. Yeah. I didn't even look at it like that. But I think I was trying to get your attention to be like, hey, if you need anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. online, you were like this crazy kid. And I was just like, and I used to tell my wife, I was like, dude, this crazy kid, like, he seems really fun, but he's just fucking wild yeah, on social yeah. media. Like taking yeah. pictures while taking the shit. Yeah. I was like just a bunch of random stuff, and then when we finally got to meet, it was like a, like it was like a nice experience. Yeah, it, it was super chill. Yeah. It was super chill. I was just, I think I was just super defensive because I was like, I was pretty new to the space. Yeah, I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know like a lot of people that were also doing it. So yeah. I was like, shit, like I want to stay in my own lane. I don't want people to, you know, do the stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. and then maybe that's also why people feel the need to like gatekeep a lot of things. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, they're like, I don't want to tell you where I get my shit done. Yeah, yeah. But then you have done the opposite, right? Like, you've done, like, put people out, mm. you know, like, outed people. Be like, oh, this is where you should go. Yeah. And that, I feel like you've realized, too, that it's better just to let people know where to go. 100%. Because at the end of the day, even if you have all the tools, you can't do what you do or you or I do. Yeah, you know what I mean? 100%. Like, it's more to it than just clothes. It's more to it than going to these places. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like. Here are the tools. Yeah. If you want to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like you'll go out, you'll you'll use the tools, you'll figure it out yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? I totally agree with that. Um, and I also feel because like a lot of young people want to get into like making clothes and stuff. It's really fun. It's like expressive creativity, yeah. but it's it's super hard to find um, knowledge about it. Yeah. You know? And like it, I remember when I first started, it was impossible for me to find like vendors and stuff. You know? What yeah. I mean? So that's why. I, I want to kind of be there and like give a hand to them because yeah. I feel like knowledge shouldn't be gatekept. Of course, there's some things that like 
I want to keep to myself. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just for business purposes, small stuff, you know? small yeah, stuff, yeah. small stuff. But like for the most part, I don't, I don't feel like stuff like knowledge like that should be withheld. Um, and like, I just want people to flourish, you know? And I, I like to promote businesses that like, I really believe in yeah. like, like you, you mm -hmm. know, like I, I'd, I'd always try and plug you as much as I can because yeah. like, I know your work ethic. I know the quality that you produce. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's actual, um, substance that people could like take from that you know yeah. what i mean so yeah i try my best to just like help help you know what i mean yeah help people out yeah. but i also the the thing that i've noticed is that people follow you so much right where whatever you say they kind of do mm -hmm. and i feel like you've created which maybe sounds a little weird i don't mm -hmm. know i could be wrong but i feel like you created this little like wave of people that want to make patterns themselves because mm -hmm. they they seen your videos and they were like, I want to be like Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a way, it's hard to, it's not as easy as you make it seem yeah, to make patterns. Yeah, 100%. And I feel like that's where it got a little like funky because it's like, people think it's really easy to make patterns. They're like, oh yeah, I can make a pattern. It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. You mm -hmm. know, like I learned it from this guy. Yeah. But the truth is that it's not that easy. You know, you make it look easy. And yeah, there are some patterns that are a t-shirt. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. But as you continue to like make complex designs, it's like, oh, it's not that easy. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. And that's that I think comes into play because of like there's not a lot of knowledge yeah. like out there. You know what I mean? Like I make patterns because like I learned how to make patterns from school. Yeah. And I'd like to showcase that. But like kids, that's all that they see. Like yeah. I'm like one of the only um, I'd say people that show like the behind the scenes of production. Yeah. And that's just all that I know. So that's like what I push out. And then kids think like, oh, that's how you got to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? But there's different avenues for yeah. sure. Like I even had a kid come to me. We ended up not working, but he was like, oh, yeah, I saw that Nick. Um, like you, you know, you guys, you and Nick know each other. And so I follow him and he, I see that he kind of goes everywhere, mm -hmm. different places to do everything. So he says that you're the best for patterns. So I'm going to go somewhere else to do the production and I'm going to go <laughs> somewhere else to do that. And I'm just like, dude, yeah, no. Yeah. I was like, you got it so wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then that's where I, I started understanding that you're, you're super influential, mm -hmm. but these the, the youth sometimes they miss a big yeah, chunk yeah, for sure. of like how things should actually go. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I kind of realized yeah. later on. And I ended up not working with that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ended up working, but then um, he ended up just not working. I just, I didn't finish the project mm -hmm. and I just, I didn't even start it. Yeah. The pattern was like super yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the leg, it was a sweatpant mm -hmm. and then it was like a wide leg and all of the opening was on one side. So it was just like straight on one side and then this side oh, was like. Oh shit, it wasn't balanced. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, I messaged him and I'm like, dude, who made this pattern? He's like, oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I was like, this is off. Like, yeah. this is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. I was like, it's not blended. Mm. And then he's like, oh, okay, well, um, send if you want, I'll send you another one. I'll adjust it. Mm. And I was like, no, at this point, like respectfully, yeah. like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, this yeah. is not going to work. And then we ended up trying to adjust it, but then we ran out of time. I see, then, I see. And then he got a little impatient and mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Yeah, production takes a while. Uh, people don't understand that. Yeah. It like genuinely takes a minute just for like the development phase yeah. and getting it right. Um, it's not, oh, I want this. Let's get it done in a week, you know? Yeah, but it people takes... think it's like that. It's just like, oh, why can't you just get it done fast? Yeah. It's like, no. <laughs> it's not like it's that. It's not like that. Know? And even if that's the case, it's one project and it's like I have to move everyone off yeah like that one person has to just be on this one job mm -hmm. and they have to change threads and like bobbins yeah. and make sure that they're set up and conversation mm -hmm. needs to be had it's and not. you're running like a full operate you have like a whole factory you know what yeah. i mean like you can't just stop it for like one sample yeah you but know? you know everyone gets scheduled in yeah. and stuff yeah. you know but still it takes time mm -hmm. so like for me here when i work with people it's like i'm patient with you right like so I don't need a, a designer to have all the tools that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, if you were to come in here, like I didn't know you, you're already ready, right? Like you know what, what you want, you know the terminology. But if you don't, then I still take on a lot of these kids mm -hmm. where um, you don't have to have all those tools and then I'll just meet you halfway or mm -hmm. more. But it's like if I'm patient with you, then you have to be patient with Agreed. me. Agreed. Where it's like if I'm not, if, if it's taking me a little longer, it's like you got to just understand Yeah, you got to understand. It's not that it's not that easy. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 So I think that's a lot of the stuff that goes on with production that people don't see, mm -hmm. you know, but I think overall, um, 
it is fun. It is satisfying. But the way that you promote it on your social media, yeah, I think you do make it seem fun. Sometimes I look at your videos and I'm like, man, I want to make more <laughs> random videos. Yeah, like that. yeah. Only the good parts, bro. No one wants to show the bad stuff. It it can get it can get pretty stressful. You know yeah. what I mean? There's and a lot then, of the bad stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff. Yeah. Like there's always something that goes like. You can just be making like a T-shirt, and then of course there's always gonna be something that goes wrong, bro. Like yeah. it's never it's never A to B. It's A B C D E F G. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and then people, I think they their expectations are that the production is gonna be exactly like the sample. Agreed. But Agreed. it's like it's not. Yeah, there's tolerances. There's tolerances. Stuff, yeah, you know we talked I mean? about that. Tolerances yeah. are something that people need to understand. Yeah, they need to understand that. Like, uh, you make your own tolerance sheet. You yeah. just make sure it's it's within spec. You know, it's like nothing. Nothing's gonna be like the sample. The sample yeah. is perfect. perfect. You want the sample to be perfect. That's yeah. the base standard. You know, but um, there's deviances. Of course. Yeah, and people just they they forget, and then they're like, "Why? I don't understand." It's like, well, it starts from cutting. Yeah. And the cutter might move an eighth. Yeah one side and an eighth on the other mm. or a 16th mm. and then now you're at a quarter yeah. maybe and then the sewer yep. might take off another hair yep and then now you're pushing like exactly. almost three eighths <laughs> and then you know and then yeah. even if they didn't cut it and if they stretched it or if then when you get to pressing they press it pushing yeah like yeah. pulling out then there's so many factors yeah there's so many factors you know and it's like we try to negate that but you can't yeah i think it's just part it's of part of the it's yeah. part of the business. Yeah, and people need to understand that. That along with um, the understanding that there are, when you're doing production, there are going to be pieces that are damaged. Yeah, just, yeah. just out of... Just, just probability. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's just, it happens and yeah. you have to expect that. Because some clients are like, oh, I want everything to be perfect, all of them. It's like, well, what the, it's not... It's not possible. It's not, it's it's not, not possible. It's not going to happen, dude. Yeah. But um, what was I going to bring up? I was going to bring up something else. Um, damn it. What was I going with this? Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> now I was going to bring up something about social media. Yeah. But I couldn't remember what I was going to get at. Yeah, I feel um, like a lot of kids take it as face value for yeah. like with what I post. You know, there's definitely more that goes into it. Um, like we were saying, like the bad stuff. Yeah. Like it's it's good for social media just to see the, like the good stuff, but there's there's a lot that can go wrong. There's a yeah. lot that can go wrong. I was watching um, uh, what was it? Cole Buxton. Mm -hmm. someone sent me that a while ago and mm -hmm. they were like, Oh, check out this video, this cool bucks and video. It's so inspiring. Mm -hmm. And like, blah, blah, blah. And I watched it and I was like, Holy fuck, this is not inspiring. <laughs> this is a fucking nightmare. Really? So basically the whole cool bucks and story that he'll put out videos once a year. Mm -hmm. And, um, it'll be like a recap of what happened that year during these drops. And then this drop was, I think a black Friday, black Friday drop. So, um, basically the whole thing is that there was an issue with the manufacturer, the, mm -hmm. the shipment never arrived and it was late and they needed to deliver for a show or something or a store opening or something like that. And for their black Friday sale. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing is literally just on that. And from a manufacturer point of view, I'm like, this is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Like I was just anxious watching this whole video. Cause it's like shit like that happens. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what do you do? Yeah. Like, what do you do? Like, yeah, the shit, you know, like even here. Like, even on this project that we have here, like, we're behind mm. because um, one of the girls, they're kind of like family members. Uh, one of the girls, the uncle passed away. Mm. So, you know, it's unexpected. Yeah. And then she left half day. And then the next day she came. And then the following day she called off. Yeah. Yeah. And what do I do? And then I have to take off people from my other team mm -hmm. to help fill that role. Yeah, that yeah. role. And then the other job gets pushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, uh you know yeah, yeah but what are you what are you supposed to do exactly like it's people scary. have lives yeah it's scary bro Fuck. but that that kind of stuff reminds me of when i used to work at bmw because mm -hmm. i used to call off all the fucking time <laughs> yeah i used to fucking call off all the time <laughs> but but over there like you make your own hours kind of right mm -hmm. where they pay you per job mm -hmm. they pay you per job so if an oil change was like i don't know doing breaks was like two hours mm -hmm. if i could do it in 30 minutes then i get the two hours yeah so if i did a bunch of those in less time then I could, you know, I come out winning. So I would be flagging, you know, per paper, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 120 hours in a, in a, and I was only there physically like 50 hours. Wow. So I was just like, well, what I need to be here for? Yeah. I'm out, you know? So then I would leave and then they would get upset and then they'd be like, oh, well imagine if you were here, if you were here the full 80 hours, mm -hmm. well imagine what you could do. And I yeah, was like, you well, could do fuck it. you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking done. I'm doing better than everyone else. Like yeah. I'm like the top percent here. 
it was like me and another guy. I was like, I'm not going to be here all yeah, day. Yeah, there's no point. And at that point, I was already trying to do this. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah. So uh, when did you start working at BMW? When did you actually quit BMW? Oh, that one's tough. Yeah, that one. Um, so, yeah, so that one is now a little less than a year. A year? Yeah. You've been only doing production for a year. Yeah, production probably even less. Are you fucking kidding yeah. me? Holy shit, dude. That's yeah. actually insane. I know. And like, I, the thing is that I've never told anyone, right? Because I feel like people would be like, what the fuck? Yeah. How is this possible? Because it almost seems like I popped out of nowhere. Yeah. Just like, oh, turnkey's here. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh so, my God. Yeah. So no one really knows that the, the whole story behind that was that I was working at BMW and then I was having issues with management, like crazy all the time. Mm -hmm. So then towards the end of that, I was, uh, it just became leadership like it was the wrong people for the job, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so they would have regular technicians become, um, uh, what do you call it? Managers. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, but you guys don't have the skills to manage people. Mm -hmm. Like at that time, I already had like my little team. So I knew how to manage people, but I was still working there, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's like, um, you know, it's like, it's a safe job and I'm like, I'm getting insurance yeah, and all yeah, these yeah. things. I was like, yeah, I'm going to keep that there as long as I can. Mm -hmm. So, um, like security, you know, but, um, Towards the end of that, yeah, it was just like the wrong people for the jobs. I kept arguing with them. And then at the very end, I just resigned. Yeah. Like very, just like abruptly, just like mm. I'm out. Mm. And I resigned. I got written up by like one of the, I got written up because the manager, the, the technician, the other technician. <laughs> yeah. He snitched on me about some shit. Why I called off. And then I wow. got written up and I just, I have my write up letter. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to keep this and I'm just going to frame it. And then after that, I just resigned. I was Good. just like, fuck Good. all this. Good. And then once I designed, I, I um, once I resigned, I put all my efforts into this. This like took off. Yeah, that's. I mean, it shows, dude. Yeah, fuck a year. Yeah. You're pretty established for a fucking year, yeah, I bro. Know. I know. That's why I don't tell Holy people shit. that. And I don't know. Like, I really, I don't even. It's kind of crazy to say, but yeah. Where it's like I never wanted people to actually know, but whatever. That's the truth. Yeah. But I've been in the industry for many years. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But as a manufacturer, yeah, it's only been a year. For the knowledge that you have yeah. and, like, um, the technicalities that you're, like, super um, – you're just on point. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. For – damn, bro. Yeah. That's crazy that's to crazy. even meet. Like, producing is one thing, but then running a factory yeah. and doing all that and managing. Yeah. And being as successful as you are yeah, the for one fast, year, like yeah. And you just keep expanding, bro. <laughs> yeah, you just crazy. keep expanding. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> that is pretty freaking insane. Yeah. So it just that that just shows you you got to apply yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, I think affirmations is a big thing for me, right? It's like you say you want something to happen. And then once it's presented to you where it's like, oh, this is what's meant to happen. Like this is what you ask for, then you have to make that move. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people will ask for things to be like, I want to quit my nine to five. Yeah. And if I quit my nine to five, I want it to look like this. And then the opportunity comes where you're like, oh, look, you're making money doing your mm -hmm. other thing. But then you got to take the jump. You it's got not to. just like I, I literally thought it was going to be I'm going to have so much business here that when I leave, that when I when I leave BMW, that I'll just be like, hey, I have too much work. I can't show up anymore. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even like that at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I had to take a jump. Yeah. I have to like, I had to make that move. Yeah. And so it's like, I feel that if anybody had, like, if you want something, you have to just go for it. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, then guess what? Have a backup, a, a, a backup ish. Not mm -hmm. like that's, I'm going to fall back. To yeah. That don't right fall away. Back. But it's just like, have a plan. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. if this doesn't work out, is there something else that mm -hmm. you can do? And mm -hmm. for me, I was like, okay, well, if this doesn't work out for whatever reason, I could just go to another BMW yeah. dealership. Yeah. I totally I like, agree. Fucking easy. I totally agree, dude. Like that uncomfortability is honestly where like you grow the most. Yeah. Like I, cause I've been, I'm, I'm pretty new to this too. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we both, like I literally met you when I started. Really? Yeah. I met you when I started. That's like six, eight months ago. Like I was, I was working at that factory for like, I worked there for I think six months, but then. So you, wait, hold on. So, so you were doing the patterns before, right? Like, I was that's how, that's how I, that's how I, I knew you, right, from your social media. Yeah. Yeah, so you were making patterns and jeans and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then you started working at a factory. Mm. Yeah, so um, I I graduated FITM, I think, 2022. Uh -huh. And then um, I was just applying to so many jobs, right? Anything that I could get, like just work at a factory, like be an assistant pattern maker. Yeah. 
Um, but no one was reaching out. Um, and I had a professor that like taught me how to make patterns from scratch. And then from there I started making jeans yeah. and like posting it on TikTok. And then people were like asking me like, yo, like, can you make me some jeans? So from there I, I was, I think I was making pants for like a solid eight months, like uh, every day, yeah. two pairs of pants a week. Um, and then I finally got a call back from a factory and they're like, yo, like, I want you to work here as like a assistant technical designer. Yeah. And I did that for like six months, but like in between that time, I started uh, working on Ion Gaff with Ricky. Yeah. And uh, we were like making shirts and then he was like, yo, I want you to quit your job, you know? And that, that was the uncomfortability for me. Yeah. Like, he was like, yo, I want you to quit your job. And like, I want you to like, like work with me. <laughs> I know. I was like, dude, I just started. You know what I mean? So I was like, I was really scared. I was genuinely really scared to quit. So I did both at the same time. Like, oh, yeah. yep. I only had Tuesdays off and I had to have Tuesdays off because like Monday through Friday is the only times that a lot of factors are open. Yeah. So like I couldn't, I couldn't go to source fabric on a Saturday, you yeah, know, cause yeah. no one's open. Yeah. No one. So I had to take Tuesdays off and on Tuesdays I would do all my production runs. Like I would go like visit mills, visit cutters, visit sewers, yeah. visit pattern makers, visit graders. You know what I mean? Like I did everything and then I'd come home and then I'd make patterns again. Fuck. You know what I mean? So like it was super hard. And then, um, he was just like, dude, quit your job, like work with me full time. And then I quit, I quit that factory job. And then I put everything into like the hoodies that we made Yeah. and we did so good. And like, that's crazy. if I didn't take that jump, if I didn't like quit my, my factory job, I don't think like, I don't think the quality would have been there. And I, yeah. you know, like if it wasn't for Ricky's also, um, man, uh, marketing, he's such a good marketer, bro. Like if it wasn't for him, and me like putting in the hours that we did like yeah. dude i don't even think we'd be here i wouldn't even be on this podcast that's crazy. <laughs> i'd be back in uh nursing school bro so damn that like but you don't think you'd still be at that factory um no the money wasn't like like what i do you loved, do, like so what did the factory what did they do so they they produce in la as well okay. um but it was a brand or it was just a factory that just so they did um they they had their own line yeah and they also produce for other people oh, okay, okay um so what i would do i would make all their technical flats um and then i do all the production running uh, like, okay. so i was the runner and then i did all the flats on adobe and like if there's anything they need to help with in the factory like that's what i would do oh uh, okay yeah okay. so like the bitch work you yeah know what i mean just the bitch work yeah, yeah yeah but it taught me a lot it taught me a lot about production and like i met a lot of um people who i still work with today you know oh okay yeah so they oh, were just, really okay. pretty good and i feel like those are one of the those are some of the benefits of working with the factory right because mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. for us we're trying to we're, we're looking to bring in people to mm -hmm. like an assistant or something mm -hmm. but i think the hard part is finding someone that's like wants to be professional but still wants to have a little bit of fun yeah but sometimes it's just like they're, they're just too immature yeah or they just think this is all fun and games yeah and it's just like no yeah yeah it's not it's like a, it's a business it's a business it's a business exactly. it's and a it's business. like and after all the the fun stuff is gone you realize that at the end of the day this is a business and these are people's livelihoods mm -hmm. and so it needs to be taken serious 100%. and i think it's hard to find that in the youth mm -hmm. you know where so that's why it's hard to find someone to hire yeah yeah it's like they're like oh yeah you're a factory i want to work with you it's fun but it's like they a lot a lot of kids um they don't like they want to do it but they don't have the grit and the oh, yeah. balls to like stay you know what i mean like it, it does look like a lot of fun. You do learn a lot, yeah. but it comes at a cost to like a lot of stress, a lot of time. Yeah. You know, it's no, it's not. It's and then not you fun. quit because your friend starts a brand and wants you to quit. <laughs> right? So like, so then I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, fuck. Damn, I didn't, I didn't know that part of that story. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I always thought that you had, you and Ricky had the brand, mm -hmm. and then at one point you were working at a like. Mm -hmm. just a long time ago you were working at this manufacturer mm -hmm. and that was it yeah and then yeah but i didn't know it was like he yeah he was grinding that that he was doing like screen prints on uh on blanks and stuff and then he was like let's take it up a notch and then he invited me to like make t-shirts and then we made our first t-shirt and we did it in la Damn. and then from there he was just he was killing it on tiktok yeah still is and then um he was like yo you know let's let's take this brand to the next step and then we did the hoodies um and then it's just been history from there. We've just been working every day. Uh, we we expanded our team too. Yeah. We hired like two new people, three new people, and then we have like a studio now, and 
Who are know. the three new people? Like, what are the? I know, I know, I met Adam. Adam's Adam, one of them. Yeah. Uh, we have a um, a freelancer. Her name is Terry. Shout out Terry. She's amazing. Uh, <laughs> she, she does a lot of our like um, our tech packs. Oh, okay. And then on Ricky's end, which is the marketing, yeah. we hired this guy named Ty. He okay. does a lot of the um, creative direction for like shoots and uh, marketing campaigns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like all the all the um, like the photos that you guys put on Ion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's their work. Yeah, okay. they do great work. Um, that you know you know it's good work when I feel like that's you guys. Yeah, yeah. They have such a great um, understanding of our brand identity, and the, I think the marketing like which I feel is a little tough because to explain to someone this is what our brand is yeah. like a brand like yours yeah. is really hard because I, I couldn't explain it, mm -hmm. but the marketing is just exactly what you guys yeah are. it's like, honestly how i feel of it it's like an extension of ricky himself like oh, okay. that guy is just all fun you know yeah. he's crazy he's outlandish he has like such an interesting mind you know what yeah. i mean and that brand is like that's just him yeah. that's just him and um yeah i'm glad that I, I like i have the opportunity to work with them and like everyone there works their ass off they're like the hardest working fucking 20 year olds i've ever met you know what i mean yeah and like having a great team makes you want to be better you know yeah, what i mean 100 yeah so yeah. like if it wasn't for my team like working over hours and like even on weekends we work you know yeah i i don't think we'd we'd be at this this spot like yeah. we're still starting we're still new you know but like we're really trying to get new stuff out there you know yeah. and like it's through the help of them that like stuff like this can even happen you know yeah and i think it's really hard i think the hardest part is building out a team mm -hmm. someone who has the same vision 100 percent aligns oh with you and crazy. wants to work yeah like you because i feel i i mean i only met adam a couple of times but i feel like the dude wants to like literally help the business grow yeah. and be a part of this yeah whole thing. 100 as much as you do you know as much as you do which is really hard to find like literally i have, I have these conversations with pool house when mm -hmm. he was trying to look for an assistant now he did find his mm -hmm. assistant slash employee mm -hmm. but one of the biggest issues was finding people like that and then multiple and then doing that again yeah how do i get more people like that a hundred dude it was so hard to find someone else that could like run production the way he does yeah like his care he like genuinely cares about it he cares about us he cares about like furthering this business if it wasn't for him oh my god like doing runs was impossible just by myself yeah. you know what i mean I mean, which I enjoyed because I I'm, did. Yeah, I yeah, did enjoy. It. I yeah. can't even lie. Like talking to the vendors yeah. and like it's cool. You it's know, so much fun, yeah. man. But it's cool if that's all you're gonna do. Exactly. But it's not cool if you got to do the runs and then come back and exactly. take care of business. It's hard to expand. Yeah. Just doing everything yourself, and he fills in that role so so well, and yeah. I trust him like with my life, and it's so it's it's impossible for me to think that I have to do that again. Like you said, you know, I have to find three more people to run production. I yeah. have to find an assistant for myself that I trust and that I know like cares about what we do and yeah. like, actually can think, you know, that's, that's a tough, part, it's yeah. really hard. It's really hard. Um, but sometimes what I found out here with my people here, cause it's the same idea when we have sewers is, um, I let them sometimes find it. Uh, like they find it themselves and then mm. they bat them out, mm. which is maybe if Adam has someone be like, Hey Adam, find me someone else. That's, that's true. Just like you that's or similar. True. That's true. Yeah. And then they might make it easier, you know, because the, the idea of having, you know, because if you put out like an ad and be like, I'm looking for this. Give like a whole bunch of weirdos, Yeah, like you'll, weirdos, you'll a bunch of them. But how do you vet them out? Yeah. And I think that's the hard part. It's like, yeah. how do you start vetting people out? Mm. It's like, are you going to be good? Who who backs you up? Right? Yeah. yeah. Which has every, and then now saying this reminds me of when I had my brand where I wanted to be in stores. Like I wanted to be in Maxfields. I wanted to be in H. Lorenzo. Mm -hmm. But you can't get in those stores unless mm -hmm. you have backing. Yeah, yeah. And I always thought like, this is so dumb. Like how come, like I, my brand's great. How come I'm not getting in these stores? But mm -hmm. it's it's just because they need someone to back you yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, someone credible. Yeah, you someone know, credible. I, I get that. Yeah, get and that. so now, now that I have a, a business and you have a business, now I understand why you need someone to back you up because people want to be a part of whatever you you are mm -hmm. you have so there has to be some way to vet out yeah I agree. you know I the agree. good and the bad or just yeah. the trying to be on some bullshit yeah facts the because they can really fuck up the process of everything yeah, you they know? can fuck up your whole business everything 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 like literally damn near close you down yeah yeah, yeah. one production run that's just that shit oh yeah. my god and you have to pay all that back yeah. and on top of that the time the time which is the, the most time, important yeah. part like and then let's just say you know you develop this or the production goes bad and then uh, then you start getting chargebacks <sighs> on all of that 
And then you still have to put out the money that you just spent and just lost. Yeah. What do you do? What can you do, man? Right, see? Shit. So that's why it, it, people overlook that I the whole team thing, but it's really important because mm-hmm. things could spiral. Yeah. Really fast. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was we were talking earlier about uh, chargebacks and stuff. But so you guys don't deal with any chargebacks? So actually, uh, Ricky's Ricky's been getting into the like the whole being professional stuff because before, like people would complain, we're like, "Fuck you, bro," you know? Yeah. And that was it. it kind of played into like the branding and yeah, stuff, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. And um, we would take it case by case, of course. Like if it was like a random kid that was like with an attitude, you know, we'd we'd present him with the same attitude. Which I feel would be like all your class. <laughs> <laughs> Like all your customers, I feel like would have an attitude. A lot of a lot of interesting people you'd yeah. meet from our demographic. Um, but like, yeah, you know, we just come off like that. But he would handle. He would still handle it. You know, like we'd be like, oh, we can give you credits, or like we can take it back if we if, if we have anything in inventory, which is like, it's very rare. Yeah. Like we we give it to them. You know what I mean? But um, we still would have that character to us. You know, like. So he handles a lot of the like the business emails and stuff. So that's him talking. Uh, like, you're okay. genuinely talking to Ricky. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, like we we try to navigate it really well because sometimes it's like moms coming up and being like, "Hi, like there's something wrong with my son's product," you know, and like how <laughs> we can't just be like, "Yeah, fuck you, like fuck you, mom, fuck you, bitch, <laughs> <laughs> get your son right," <laughs> you know, like we can't do that. So we. He he navigates it. He navigates it really oh, okay. well. But um, yeah. Sometimes if you do get an email and you come back with like a like a nasty response, we'll we'll come back even worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's all fun and games. We'll we'll but, still help but you, you out. But I guess it's in your policy that no like no chargeback. Like where the customer is like, well, you know what? I didn't get my yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. chargeback. Yeah, yeah yeah. Um, I mean sometimes it's different depending on the situation. Yeah. But like if they just want like a refund, it's like, you know, we we wouldn't really typically take a refund unless there's like a reason to. Yeah. Know? You know. Yeah, and and I think that's that's a big part of growth in business, right? Because as you continue to grow, right, you're gonna have to start taking stuff back at some point. Yeah, you, yeah just because it, it's just the nature of the beast, right? Because mm, mm. you want more more people, then it's like, oh well, I want to be able to return it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so then yeah. you start kind of bending, right? In the beginning, I always feel like, especially with you, you guys could really pretty much do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Be like, fuck you. If you don't yeah. like it, then fuck it. But then you get to this next level, yeah. And then yeah. you're like, wait, okay, like I want to make sure that we maintain this. Yeah, yeah. Right? We gotta be a little corporate. Yeah, you know, you know what, what I mean. mean? And then you have to yeah. change those rules. We definitely will. Yeah, we definitely will. It's it gets hard though, because when we we started and we had like a huge growth spurt, yeah. you know what I mean. And it was just me and him working it. So it was so hard to like keep inventory and we didn't have a place to put it in. So yeah. it, would be, it would be just like in my crib. It's crazy. Um, and we, we had, uh, we couldn't respond to all the emails and like yeah. he was working, I was working, you know what I mean? So we didn't really have anyone to do customer service. Damn. But now that we've built out the team, like we're, we're definitely uh, going on their route where like we can help everyone out, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. But um, in the beginning it was, that, that's why we responded the way we did, you know, like yeah, just with a big old fucking yeah, middle yeah, finger yeah. and shit. Just because, like, uh, we, we didn't have a team to, like, help us, and we couldn't really keep track of, like, inventory and numbers and stuff like that the way we do now. Yeah. You know? Like, you have to get legit. At some point, you yeah. get legit. Yeah. Same thing happened to us, too. We just kind of like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. we need to get legit because shit's a fucking mess right now. That That's that's honestly, I, I, like, applaud you because you run the whole business side, and then you take care of, all, like, all the clients and the creative side, you know? Yeah. Like, the bookkeeping, I fucking hate bookkeeping, yeah. bro. Like... I, I just like you do it? You I don't do, do oh, any okay. of that. I was like, That's why I like I, I'm like, bro, I'll do all the production. Just please do the bookkeeping. Yeah. You, you know? got to hire someone for that because I that is that some shit. people like numbers. I can't be on that. I can't. I yeah. can't. I'm, I'm too focused on fucking other shit. Yeah. Well, no, the thing is that you have a creative mind. Right. And so that's the difference. I think that's the, the downfall of creatives is that mm-hmm. their <laughs> minds are like fucking yeah. everywhere. And yeah. Believe me, you know, I'm still creative. That's why I think I, I feel like I could develop so well with clients because mm-hmm. I'm still like thinking like a designer. Yeah. But a part of my brain is like, oh, well, I'm a manufacturer and there's this is a reality. Yeah. We can't do that. Yeah. But the other part of my mind is like fucking everywhere. Yeah. And that's a downfall on creatives because your mind is literally everywhere. Mm-hmm. But you have these ideas and they're brilliant. But you, if you can't apply, which is the other part, and like really commit to something and follow through, then it's just like it's really hard to grow a business. And that's why a lot of clothing brands, they have good ideas, but to keep it going and going and going, it, I think that's where it gets really yeah. tough. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even even when I deal with clients now, like I had a client who, uh, we developed a shirt for her 
It was a women's shirt. And at the very end, she didn't like it. She said it wasn't to her liking. And so um, we ended up just working out a trade. But um, it was very, it was like it needed to drape over and down. But she didn't want it to look like it was machine sewn. Mm -hmm. But then when we switched fabric out and did all these things and at the end, she was just like, no, I don't like it. It just doesn't look right. And mm -hmm. this and that. I'm just like, all right, well, <laughs> like the idea that I had was to make pleats like a quarter inch, a half inch and one inch. Mm -hmm. So that way we control the pleats that go down on this top that was like this. Mm -hmm. But she didn't want that. And so I think she was a creative behind it, but the reality was different. Yeah. And that's why I was telling her, I was like, the reality is that this might, may not work. Yeah. Like she yeah. wanted some couture stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like that could, you, could, you can't really sometimes do that yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. and so I was just like, all right, well you might just have to do this yourself. She's like, yeah, I just think maybe, maybe this isn't your type of work, mm. which is a little offensive. <laughs> yeah. You want to be able to do everything. Facts, but but facts. then I was just like, you know what? Maybe it isn't my type of work. Yeah. And it's not worth the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and so I think being the business that we are and I'm still learning, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know everything, but I'm still learning, but I have to learn fast without yeah. making too many mistakes and it costing us like a bunch of money Yeah, yeah, yeah. where I'm just like, ah, actually maybe that may not be for me because yeah. I was taking on, I like to take on exciting jobs. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like you, you want to design something that's fun not something that you're not interested in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I like to take on jobs that aren't going to be interesting, but this one kind of bit me in the ass a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, I, I get what you mean. You know, like you want to be able to do it. Like I'm, I'm so stubborn cause I'm like, Oh, I want to be able to do this design. You know what I mean? Like if Ricky wants this, like I'm going to fucking do it, you know, but mm -hmm. sometimes you just got to think business wise, like it's, it's not the best route for you. Like yeah. it takes up a lot of your resources and um for like one product is is that really worth it when you can stretch it across like three three other products yeah exactly you know what i mean so i get i get what you mean you just got to be where do you feel like you guys are going with the brand i remember we went to um what was that stupid show that we went to the uh, um magic source magic magic sourcing in vegas yeah Fucking yeah nightmare. <laughs> But I, you enjoyed it. You seemed like dude. You, you I was I was just fucking talking to everyone, walking everywhere. Holy shit! I got my steps in. Yeah. Fucking thirty thousand fucking steps. It was insane. Yeah. See, you seem like you enjoyed yourself. Yeah. That was my first trade show ever. So Me I was too. Like, really? Yeah. That was literally my first trade show. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Ever. And I was just like, you're not fucking with it. No. You're not fucking with it. Well, it just for me, it didn't apply. Yeah. It was like I should have been at that show. Yeah. Like that. That's what it, what would have been. Yeah. But it just didn't make sense for me. But for you. You know, if you're, or for you, and like, uh, I met with Pool House too. Mm. You know, he was trying to get some, um, he's trying to just see what shoes and stuff, like overseas manufacturers. Mm. That's all he was really interested in. But like for you guys, what did you, what did you get out of that whole experience? So we're trying to expand out yeah. from LA because the, what well, we found the number one thing, the number one time consumer for us was um, the runs. So if we can get away from the runs and just stick to straight designing, uh, strict, stick to marketing which is what we want the brand to be yeah um then we could you know expand the brand like push oh, it out okay. bigger um but so so no more like no more la manufacturing we still want I, i'm still trying to push heavily on the core stuff made in la like the hoodies and the t-shirts yeah um but everything else we're trying to switch it away because it just takes a lot of time you know yeah. what i mean and like time is the most important thing for us yeah um, so we want to be in the office. We got like a whole new studio. Just yeah, so which I think you were telling me earlier, but you didn't you didn't finish. So yeah. So okay, we'll come back to that. But word word word. But yeah, we got we got a new stu like we're just trying to promote a lot of um, a lot of work that would uh, just make more product. You know yeah. what I mean? We're just trying to make more product. Um, so it doesn't at, not anymore where it needs to be just L A. Right? Yeah, like, not not just L A. Like we we just want to make interesting stuff and then. Basically, the whole idea of the brand is to um, make niche products uh, more generalized to the public. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, make interesting, weird stuff. And people were like, huh. Marketed so well so that people were like, huh, that's, like, that's really cool. You yeah. know, like, I'd wear that. Do you think it – I think we've kind of talked about this before. Do you think – it'll kind of take away from the, you know, because you guys are made in LA and there's mm. like something that yeah. comes with that. Do you feel like it's taken away from that or yeah, not really for what you guys are trying to do? Like, I think, um, 
I mean, we, we're still going to be, I'm still going to be really heavy on the quality of yeah. the clothing. And Ricky's also super into that. Um, but I think what we want the brand to be known more for is the marketing. Oh, okay. Like we, we really, really enjoy marketing. Um, Which is, on, I, I think that's, I think it's important that you say that because mm -hmm. it, it makes a difference yeah. when you look at a brand, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you want to focus on the marketing and make these products that are cool and fun. Mm -hmm. And not, and, and you also have the brands that are like, I'm an LA brand mm -hmm. and this is my, my story is that I'm from LA. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you have to be in LA, yeah. right? Where for you guys, it's like, we want to make real cool stuff, keep the quality great, mm -hmm. but the marketing needs to be fun. And so yeah. therefore we don't really need the LA yeah, yeah, story yeah, 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 yeah. anymore. What's actually super cool though, is that like, we both have two brands, right? So we have the, my Instagram handle right now is like Yurimon, okay. which is the other brand. And then the other one is Ion Gaff. So the Yurimon is literally what you said. It's all in LA. Like everything that we're going to be oh, doing okay. with that is going to be made in LA. And like, oh, that's, okay. that's the whole, I didn't understand that. Cause I, I was just like, why does he have another? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have two. So I have two, I have, uh, I have Yurimon and then Ricky has Ion Gaff. So then, um, Yurimon is mostly just about the product. Like I'm not super, super huge on marketing. Like marketing is good for sure. But like, I just want to enjoy using my uh, creative outlet as that and yep. just making clothes in LA. Yeah. And, like, and then you sell them at whatever you want, yeah. but you're not pressed to be like, it needs to fit in this margin. Yeah. And I, I yeah. can only sell it for mm -hmm. like this much for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. right? hundred percent. Yeah. The yeah, whole yeah. brand is just expressing yourself and just being fun and having fun and like stuff that I enjoy. And then yeah. Ion Gaff is like the marketing and, and then like, um, that's like the business the, where the money's coming in, right? Like the money machine. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like this happens to a lot of people too. Like they'll have the one thing, to bring in the money, right? And then you're like, okay, this is gonna be like my side project now, mm -hmm. which is Yurimon, where mm -hmm. it's like quality and I don't have to worry about yeah, yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, but definitely not taking away that like Ion Gaff wouldn't still have the quality. Like we, we yeah, still, no, we still definitely yeah. want to like. But I think what I was that. trying to say is that the the idea that it's LA based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, yeah. now understanding where your perspective is that it's more on the marketing side, um, exactly, and making a quality product, yeah, yeah, yeah. marketing, you know, forward. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of it takes away from having it, having the brand be an yeah. LA brand. Yeah. Different ideals for different brands. Yes. And I think, I think that's really important to, um, I mean, for me to know, cause I was always curious about that. I was like, oh, isn't that going to take it away from yeah. his whole thing? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now that you say that, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Just a different direction yeah. for, so that we could focus on like the marketing, you know, the fun stuff. That, yeah. yeah. That, that, that and then knows. like, besides this, that was, that's always been the idea for it, right? Like mm -hmm. just heavy on the marketing. Heavy on the marketing. Because oh, okay. he wants to, I think, create a marketing company. Or something. He, so his big inspiration is like Red Bull. You oh, know, like man. Red Bull is in extreme sports in so much random shit. Who's he? Ricky? Ricky, yeah. Okay. And, and then you're like, wait, isn't Red Bull just like a fucking a yeah, drink? They have a Formula One team. Exactly. Like, have, what? Yeah. Like, and, you know, if, if you think of extreme sports, you can kind of attach Red Bull to that whole idea. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what Ricky enjoys. He's like, that's that's so fucking cool. Like, Red Bull has nothing to do with them. Nothing. Nothing to do with snowboarding. But they're on, like, all the top snowboarders' helmets. Like, And they're the top Formula One team, which is hard as fuck. Right? Do. Yeah. Like, we just he just wants to get us to that, that, that level. That's cool. You know? Yeah, I like that. I mean... Yeah, that's cool. Then that takes us so much past clothing. It's like um, that's, that's what we want. It's to like do. this isn't even a. It, it doesn't even matter that it's a clothing brand. Mm -hmm. It's like this is just what we're using as our our vessel yeah. to just promote. Yeah, literally, it's it's more than a clothing brand for him. He wants it to be like a lifestyle, a marketing company. Oh, ah, okay. So we're just trying to get there, but right now the only avenue that we have is like clothing. And yeah, then, you have to start somewhere. You right? got to start somewhere, yeah. and you have to learn the steps too, right? You don't want to get into this big, uh, another field. And then where it's heavily invested on funds mm -hmm. and then you fucking blow it. Yeah. It's like, at least now you guys could really understand how to move people, how people react to certain things and all these things that you need to learn mm -hmm. with marketing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is great too, because then now like you always inspired me because you're so, you do influence people a lot. And then I see how you move people. And it's like, I always try to look at how you do things. So <laughs> I could like kind of learn too, you mm -hmm. know, I see. cause definitely I could, te I could, you know, share some knowledge to you with certain things that I know, but mm. as far as social media and stuff, it's like, you're the youth. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I, I need to learn from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel you, you know? Um, yeah. 
So then now with this moving forward now, you guys have a studio? Yeah, we just got a studio. Oh, okay. um, when? Like, like, Dude, we literally got it like this week. Oh, shit. This week, yeah. The paperwork was a bitch because the people that run it, like they just lose all of our papers and they just keep calling us and it's been a nightmare. But um, it's going to be over in downtown. Like, um, It's literally right next to Ace Sewing. Ace Sewing. Uh, oh, what? Yeah, Ace Sewing. Right it's it's the building right next to them that's that's where we're studio on at. the same side of the street on the other side of the street you know where the anwar's uh famous yeah, yeah. kitchen is yeah, yeah, yeah up that building where oh, what uh, yeah we're right there we got a little studio there um just a placeholder for now just so that we have a because it's so hard for us to be driving from vernon all the way back to la yeah and then my 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 house is like the hq for production yeah so like the the drive is like forty minutes, you yeah. know what I mean, and and then you got the LA traffic and stuff like it's not fun. So we just like okay, we need to be closer to LA and like, it's nice cause to have like a place to do all of our work in. It just yeah. promotes like, I think better brain activity and you you can focus more and stuff and like everyone is in the same working environment. Yep. So like, you just produce stuff faster. Yeah. Um. And then you could create like an ethos for what you want, right? Yeah. And then like. When you come into your shop, it's like, oh, yeah, this is what we represent. Mm, this exactly. is how I want people to think. And yeah, like, people are going to come over, yeah. and, you know, like we're going to have little events there and like have people to see see what we're working on. You know what I mean? And then that's sick. Yeah. So I think the studio was the next step for sure. Yeah. And then you guys are going to have some sewing machines there, no sewing machines or what? Like what's um, so I, I'm trying to have just or one like straight stitch, thing, yeah. single needle. Yeah. Um, you have to at least. Yeah. You know, just like in case we want to see the fit of something, like I can bust down the pattern really yeah. quick and then measure it and spec it and send it off to China. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, a lot of, well, I guess I'm trying to have like a pattern table there too. Yeah. And whatever, whatever I need just to, I feel like you do need basic stuff there, right? Mm. Because I think a big part of this whole stuff is that you're seeing it and it inspires you to create mm -hmm. like having a sewing machine to yeah measures yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah it just inspires you to do whatever and mm -hmm. then you guys are doing clothing so yeah yeah I but agree. it's mainly to have um like inventory there or like well we're trying to do everything out from there so um whenever we get stuff in stock uh yeah. we'll keep it at the at the studio for a little bit and then oh, ship okay. it out um yeah, just just. Is it like a commercial spot or? It's actually a live a live work studio. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's it's mainly though the the whole building is mainly like just a a living space. Yeah. But um, it was a good spot. It was a good price. Um, and it's like enough space for all three of us to start working from there. Oh, okay, perfect. You know? Your shit. You know, dude, what? like what amazes me is like you know Nate and Sean, right? Yeah, yeah. Those kids are still in high school and they're they're trying to produce stuff. And then they were in high three, school, dude, they're in high school. Nate is like 16. <laughs> what? Nate is like one of the, he works with them. Nate is 16. And then Sean is like a senior in high school. He's about to go to college in New York. And I'm like, what? you kids are insane, dude. Like, I didn't know they were that young. They're super young and they, they grind so hard. They grind so hard. I had one of my, I don't, this friend, um, from like the industry, she's like, Oh, I made a video. I think you, maybe you saw it. I was like, oh, when um, if you're trying to start a business and you're trying to attract the youth, just be com just be comfortable with being on camera, mm -hmm. FaceTiming, because the youth is all about yeah. just literally videoing right mm -hmm. there. And then she was like, oh, what do the kids even talk about nowadays? I was like, well, these fucking kids are talking about business. Like, they're <laughs> starting shit. I was like... These kids are not like you and I. Yeah, bro. What yeah, the Yeah, these fuck? kids are fucking doing shit. They, they're grunt. It's like, how the fuck? I don't know they were that young. They're super fucking young, and they just hustled, bro. I saw their socials, and I was like, ah, uh, maybe it's like they just turned 21. They leave high school shit. Yeah, but yeah. No, they're still in high school. They're still in high school, and I, it's super inspiring. It's like, yeah. like what, the, what? where the fuck are you getting this money? But, it, like, they work for it, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, they put in the effort. They put in the time, and... Yeah, it's it's just super beautiful to see people that young doing stuff this cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because at that age, like I was saying, like I was not doing anything Dude. remotely cool. I didn't have it set up. Facts. Yeah, I didn't like like Bernardo was saying, which is our videographer, um, that he he didn't he didn't he didn't feel like he was living until like twenty nine. And that was the same thing with me because mm. I didn't I felt like I wasn't really doing shit until I had more money and I figured out what the fuck I was gonna do with my mm. life. Mm. You know, because up until thirty, I was like, okay. I'm going to be this designer, famous designer guy. And then that never happened. And then slowly you're like, okay, it's not going to happen. And then <laughs> now in my late or my early 30s, yeah, early whatever 30s. it is, I'm 35. 
it, um, I feel like I'm alive. Like I'm finally being able to express myself the way that I've always seen myself. Mm -hmm. It just took some time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think no matter what, I'd rather, you know, sometimes I'm glad that people say it's like, it took you a long time. My dad used to be like, what's taking you so long? Like, are, are you going to sell your clothes? Like, how come you're still working at BMW? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know what? At this point in my life, I'm glad that I got to where I'm at later in life than early. And then, you know, just maybe I just blew it. Yeah. And yeah. then, like, I lost everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now I'm an adult. Yeah, and at least smarter. now I get to enjoy my life. And, yeah. And, like, have all these things as an adult versus, like, as a, as a kid, you're like, you don't care. You'll grind. You'll stay up late. Now it's like, it's. It's hard to do that. Yeah. I used yeah. to work BMW. I used to get up early, go to the gym, oh. like 4 or 5 a.m., go to BMW, get there by like 7, 45, 8. And then mentally, so that way I could be pumped up for work. And I would be fucking killing it. Wow. And then 5, 4.30, 5, I'd leave, come to the shop. Not this one. We had another small shop. And then I would be there till 9, 10, 11. Jesus Christ. And then next day, I did it all over again. And my main guy, Julio, he was with me by my side. Wow. Yeah, I could never do that. That yeah. is insane. We did that for years. Holy shit! Years. That's that's literally just going on that we're gonna make this happen. I'm gonna take you out of your regular sewing job, Julio, and I was like, and I'm gonna have you come here, and this is gonna be our dream. Damn. And, yeah, and, and you're it, fucking killing it. Yeah, but it, it but it didn't happen with the brand. Yeah, we had to we had to leverage it and pivot, mm. right? Because if I would have if I would have stuck to just doing my brand, I would have probably still been the same. I would have, you know, would have been at BMW probably. Mm, mm. So it's like, I think it's really important that people understand that you don't have to, you don't have to be the famous designer. Yeah. I wanted to be Mike Amiri. Yeah. You know, like I wanted to be that guy. He yeah. inspired me. That was during my era when I was designing like 2000, mm. 2015, 2014, mm. you know, like he was my big, now he's like super big. And yeah, but that's not inspiring to me anymore. His, his come up inspired me. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was like, he's another LA brand. He's down the street. You know, fear of God, same thing. You know, mm -hmm. they were like starting out. My guy now, his my main guy Julio and his son, he worked at Fear of God and ERD. Oh no way! Yeah, and so this is like 2000, yeah, 2014, 2015. Wow. So then my my guy would go work with uh, that Henry guy, ERD guy, mm -hmm. uh, part time while his son was there too. Damn. So it was just like, yeah, and this is all during, yeah. That is what, bro, when they were popping off, I, I was in eighth grade. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, I love Fear of God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. That's a small world, small bro. Small world. That is insane. Yeah. So I think it makes me feel good and I hold on to them because they understand quality at mm -hmm. the highest level mm -hmm. and how they how to handle production. Yeah. And that's why we were gifted because we do have a very special team. Because we can do a lot of things that, you know, a lot of people can't because their knowledge is like they've yeah. worked with places. That, yeah. You know, and then you guys have like grown into each other's roles that you need to be like, yeah. you're a great boss to him and he's a wonderful lead for you. you yeah, know? So exactly. It just works out super well. Yeah. And I think with management, um, I think it's important. Like, you'll, you know, I, you have a team of three or four. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Around there. So as you continue to grow, you'll, you'll have to start having people titles right because mm -hmm. then you won't have to, like you you're you'll be like the the lead guy the boss right but you won't always be around so someone needs to make a decision mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. and then that's when you need to have you know your managers need to be in place yeah and then having and then having your employees know who to listen to because then if there's no leadership like if no one says like if you don't say oh this is the manager then then, then it becomes like a management issue mm -hmm. amongst the team yeah and we even uh, we have a, a team of what seven eight and we, even for us we have those issues where they're like well who I thought you said that Julio is the manager but why is his son giving us orders ah, I see. and I'm like it's because Julio is the manager and then the second manager is his son so if he's not here he's second in charge mm -hmm. and so listen to him but i had to have these conversations with them because yeah. they were like who's in charge and then they would get mad at him the son mm -hmm. for telling them what to do oh, you're see. like you're not the boss of me yeah and i was like and they're like oh and then the boss boss me said to do something else so i'm not gonna listen to you yeah <laughs> and we're a small team yeah and like we're yeah. like close and yet we have issues like that yeah even with me dude i've never been a manager a day in my life yeah. and now that i have people working under me it's like what the fuck do I do? Like, how do I, how do I still keep that professional level while, you know, it's like one of my best friends is, is like working with me, you know, like how do I, how do I manage that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And like when I, 
I mean, I'm still new to it. Yeah. Um, I would get my ass scolded, bruh. Cause like, it's hard to, it's hard for me to maintain that relationship while still seeing myself in a different light than I am outside of being a friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? And That's like, the hard part. It's, it's super difficult, bro. Like, it's just like, how do, how do I say that? Like, I don't want to hurt his feelings. And like at the same time, like I need to get my point across, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's why they always say it's really hard to work with, with your friends. Friend. Yeah, yeah, it's it is, really dude. tough. It, it's super tough. But if you can figure that out, then you're fucking good because yeah. you can depend on someone. Yeah. And in business, you need someone to like have your back. 100%. Dude, like when Ricky and I first started, like we talk about this all the time. Like we were both, we were great friends, you know, but yeah. like once you get in that business, it's, that business side, like it's told, it's a different ball field, bro. Yeah. You know, like the whole dynamic changes, you know, because there's money involved. There's money involved. There's like work. If no one's putting in the work, like no one's making any money. Yep. You know what I mean? So like you would see different sides of each other and like working with like someone as close as Ricky, right? Like yeah. one of my best friends. It's, it, it was so hard at first, you know, like we we're like, okay, where's this time going? Where's the money going? You know what yeah. I mean? Like shit, shit doesn't look like how we talked about. Like why, why is it like that? You know? And like, luckily we stuck with it and like we grew we grew into the roles that we needed from each other you know what i mean but um i'd say like if if you're starting a business with like a friend don't expect it to be the same like the dynamic to be the same as a friendship you yeah know what i mean like it, it will really, it has to change it has it, to it fucking has to you know? and I, I you know it's funny that you say that because i do get a lot of um a handful of clients that are two people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two friends who yeah. are starting a brand. And then they come in. Well, Nate and Sean are one of them. I have mm. this other, um, Keanu and Finley. I love those boys. Yeah. Shout out those boys. Yeah. Right? Shout out, uh, Lasento. Yeah. Los, Lasento. Yeah. Lasento. Yeah. Shout out to you guys. Love you guys. Um, yeah. And then who's the other one? Whatever. But, you know, people come in like that and there's like two, two, there's a team, which mm. it helps in the beginning because you're like, okay, let's split the mm. cost. Mm. You know, it's not so bad. But then when money comes in, it's like, yeah, navigating that is navigating like, that is really hard. And then delegating who does what. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a, there's a lot that goes into is it. Is there something that now you know that you wish you would have done right away? Like if you were to, like you just say, like, you gave some advice on like people that are doing it, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to do it together. Is there something that now you know that you wish that you knew then that could help those type of people? I'd say if you're talking to vendors, not if you're talking to Eli, Eli's different. If yeah. you're talking to vendors and like it doesn't come out the way that you paid for it, like you just got to go, you just got to be a little hard ass. You know what I mean? Like back then I was, I was a little a pushover. I was a little bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I go to the dye house and when we were doing like the potassium, like it literally looked like there was no potassium on it. Yeah. And he was like, okay, yeah, pay me, my, pay me my money. You know what I mean? I'm like, bro, this is nothing like what we talked about. Yeah. And I'd pay the guy and then I'd go back. And then Ricky was like, what the fuck is this? You know what <laughs> I mean? Like we waited a week and a half yeah. for this and we paid this much. And I was like, yeah, 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 you know, like I couldn't do anything about it. Like that's just what he gave me. And he, he would be on my ass. He's like, go back in there and get what you paid for, you yeah. know, like you spent this much time on it. You spent this much money on it. You deserve to get what you asked for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where do you draw the line though? Right. Because that, that's true. You know, that's, that's the hard part. Yeah. Like I don't want to break that connection. Cause at the same time I still need him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, or do you just change? Like what if he's not the guy for the job? That's true. That's true. You know what I mean? I, it's, there's a lot of shit that goes yeah. into that, you know, but like, I'd say like, I, I just, um, get what you deserve. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like you guys work too hard to just be pushed around by other people. Yeah. I yeah. think, do, but do everything respectfully. hundred right? percent. Tastefully. Yeah. Tastefully. Because at the end of the day, everyone's running a yeah. business. Yeah. yeah. And I think even if they didn't do the right job, sometimes people are, they, they just don't do a good job. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, with, you know, if they didn't do potassium spray, they didn't do potassium yeah. spray. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's one thing. But overall, let's just say they did. They just didn't do a good job or mm. something, you know, but it's like, okay, this, this isn't good. Either fix it or you move on. Yeah. It. Yeah. But because I feel like some people could come in and be like, um, could take that advice and almost just be a dick about shit. And <laughs> yeah. then, and then, then you become a nightmare client. Yeah. Yeah. D fucking people, people take it as face value. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's layers to it. There's yeah, layers to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Um, treat everyone with respect outside of work. People are still people at the end of the day, yeah. you know, and they're trying their best. 
Um, so give them the same respect, you know, yeah. like they work just as hard as you. Yeah. You I know? think that's important. I think don't be a pushover. Yeah. Be clear. Mm hmm. Uh, but also don't be a fucking dick. Yeah. Don't yeah. be a dick. Don't, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Yeah. I hate being, and cause one, that's also another person. And yeah. then two, like if you break that bit, that bridge, bro, like yeah. you find, you have to find another fucking die house, bro. Like, yeah. That, that's Which maybe you need, maybe that's what you need, but yeah. maybe, you know, maybe, maybe you just need to talk to them respectfully. You yeah. Know what I mean, so, so, but anyways, all right. So back to ending this ion gaff, like what's the, I guess we kind of touched base on that, but what is the, the end goal for that is just to have this marketing thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what about for you? Like, what's your end goal? Like what, like what's going to happen in five years, right? In or five eight? years. That's a great question. Um, like in, is I own gap still going to be the main thing or if, I, I will always want to help Ricky no matter, yeah. like I told him this, like, even if it's not Ion gap, even if it is, I love having him as a business partner. Yeah. Um, he, he is so business oriented and he knows what he's doing and like, he makes me a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, he makes me work hard as fuck. So like, I, I, I enjoy being his number two. Yeah. Um, which is honestly, which is, um, it, it speaks a lot for who you are that you're like, that you can say that, right? Because a lot of people are ego driven. Yeah, they want to be number one. Like, I want to be number one. Yeah, like if yeah. I'm not number one, but and being number two doesn't necessarily be yeah, number two. Exactly. Like we're equals, but just in the way that I'm saying it, yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm your number two. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And and that's it. But when you get not, you know, some people do have like that ego thing. Yeah. Exactly. And, it's just like, and that was hard for me too, like oh, putting yeah. that to the side because. Growing up, I was like, I want to be the designer. Like, that, I'm so stubborn in the fact that, like, I want to do the pattern drafting. I want to do the yeah. runs. I want to do with the pata like everything by everything. myself. You yeah. know what I mean? But then I learned, like, dude, you can't do everything by no, yourself. You can't scale. You, know? you can't. You can't. And like, I learned to be okay with that. Like, I'm fine with that. Yeah. And that's I mean? the thing, being okay with it. Mm -hmm. And then that translates to clothing as well. Like, when you get when you're doing something, it doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to be okay. Yeah. Because the goal is that I. If you want it to be perfect, you're going to do it yourself every time. Mm -hmm. But if you want to grow a business, yeah. it needs to be okay. Yeah. It won't ever be perfect. It can't. And I think that's that. I learned the same thing in my business, right? I mm -hmm. wanted to do the grading. I wanted to do the digitizing. Yeah. I wanted to do fucking yeah. everything. Yeah. And then at the end, nothing got done. Mm -hmm. In the beginning part of our business, um, I was doing a lot of that stuff. And then we shot up, right? And then... Um, but then what ended up happening was that I was getting behind on stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I had like... You know, I think two clients that were upset and then we figured out how to you know save that but one client was just upset just because we didn't we ended up not finishing the job mm. and it was true we, we ended up not doing it and by the time i was like look we just got the pattern done he was just like now nah, i'm over it yeah and i felt bad like truthfully i felt bad because he had you know he had this idea and and he was excited but um we just couldn't deliver but mm. it was because of that yeah so i was trying to grow our team while trying to grow the sewers and trying to grow that side of the business. Yeah. And sometimes things fall in between the cracks and mm -hmm. you're like, Hey, you know what? I can't do it anymore. Yeah. You just got to, I mean, aim for perfection, accept the imperfections. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. You just got to keep pushing. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, th that's where I want to be with Ion Gap. But in terms of like Yuri Mon, you know, like yeah. I want everyone that's a part of the Ion Gap team to be able to express their creativity mm -hmm. without um, being worried about profit or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. in that brand. That's just great. like, like if Ricky wants to do some marketing campaign that's more artistic or it, it that, stems yeah. away from like the Ion Gaff world, like yeah. I want him to use that, like that, that's his creativity. And then for me, like the clothes that I want to make, you know, just, yeah. just flush it into there stuff that doesn't fit into like whatever else we're working yeah. on. Maybe like, you won't even do a production. It's just like the one off piece. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I, I just want that to be fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just, just really enjoy that and then build like a sense of community within, within that brand, I guess. Yeah um which will be real easy for you yeah <laughs> i hope so man but yeah that's where i want to be just just enjoying life and making clothes like that that that's what i enjoy right now so hopefully in five years i'll still be enjoying it now you will yeah i mean look at me i'm 35 <laughs> and i'm still enjoying it i yeah. just i gave up my vision of being the designer and the head mm -hmm. to guide people like you and be like you why don't we make you the like the mm -hmm. designer yeah you know what i mean it's damn just, and it's the same thing. I still get satisfaction. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of my sellers are like, we should bring back your brand. Like, and just you do it. And I'm just like, I don't know, because I get so much satisfaction out of doing it. Like, imagine, you know, like just building your whole brand. If, you know, if, if we knew each other from the, like, from the start mm -hmm. and you don't have anyone and then we help get your brand to this level. Yeah. 
it's like it feels so good it feels beautiful yeah so it's just like that part of me i can't it's hard for me to want to let go because it's fulfilling and i'm satisfied yeah because i'm still creating every day something different but then on the other hand it's like the clients that like you know it, it, dealing with a lot of clients yeah and then that's the hard part you're like a uh, shifu from kung fu panda you're like the teacher yeah you wanted to be the dragon warrior but you're the teacher yeah right? you're the master yeah <laughs> But it, you have to be able to put your ego down and yeah. be like, it's just, I'm not going to be that guy. Mm. And sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, rappers are notorious for like uh, saying things and then becoming them. Mm. But sometimes you got to let go of the dream and be yeah. like, this is reality. Yeah. And I'm, I should be okay. And then I'm okay with this. Mm. And this isn't even like a step down. Mm. I never thought I'd be this fulfilled being a manufacturer as mm. I am now. If I, and you know what the crazy part is, brother? I feel like I, need, I needed to be a manufacturer. But I needed to be a designer first mm. so that I can come from a perspective of yeah, a designer of yeah. to then be a manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I could actually connect with people and understand their pain points. Mm -hmm. And then now being who we are now with Turnkey, like I get to meet all these crazy designers and I get to be a part of their lives. Like you, if I had my brand, we would have never, mm -hmm. we would have never been friends. Yeah, we would have never met. Never, bro. So, and, and a lot of these connections I would have never had. Mm -hmm. So for me being a manufacturer, I think it's, it's like the biggest blessing I could have had because I'm a, a, like, I, I get this beautiful life. Yeah. I get to meet people like you Yeah. and like, I don't have to design clothes. Like it's just, it's just make a, them. Yeah. Yeah. You're you know? still a part of that. You're yeah. still a part of that world. You're still helping the designer. You're still basically designing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I just think that I'm meant to do this. Mm -hmm. At what point I step away, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I like, I'm definitely, I definitely feel like. I was meant to be yeah. here, you know. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, and I appreciate your friendship, and yeah, I appreciate yeah. you coming on here, of course, and being like the first official guest. <laughs> you know? I'm really blessed to be on here. Thank you for really? thinking of me to be the first person. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate it, dude. Um, yeah, I definitely want you to come back, and we'll, I, I definitely want to do these more often, and yeah. we just recap on stuff. Yeah, I'd love to. And love then to. Uh, see where you're at in a couple more months. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything that you guys are working on that you guys want you want to announce or? Um, I mean, we have a new product coming out, uh, but I'll wait for Ricky to drop the marketing, uh, the marketing shoot for that. Yeah, uh, we've been working really hard on that. Um, so, when when is this video dropping? Uh, in like two weeks. Oh, then that'll be around the time uh, when the when the um, the marketing shoot comes out. It's like a pair of track pants. Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, it was a long process, but um, yeah, I saw you working on. Yeah, those, yeah, yeah, we've we've been working on those for a minute and. Uh, yeah, just track pants. Hopefully those come out soon. And then we just have like a bunch of product lined up for the next couple of months. So um, just be on the lookout for that, I guess. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, my brother, it was a pleasure having you on here. We talked for like a good hour plus. It went by smooth. The neighbors outside weren't crazy today. <laughs> <laughs> they started doing a little burnouts. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, Eli. And then um, we'll do it again. Hell yeah. That wraps it up.